Hi there. I often get requests to create videos showing how to write the code to meet particular strategies or segments of strategies. And to do that, the strategy needs to be something that's easily convertible into an expert advisor, so something a computer can understand, uh, mainly because I don't want to make these videos so long that they're difficult to interpret and writing very complex code to handle situations that aren't easily translated to an expert uh, can be difficult. But one of the things that comes up most often is looking for higher highs and lower lows or higher lows, lower highs. And that involves finding the peaks on the chart. And I got another request just in the last week to look at a strategy that involves this. And on the face of that strategy, it looks quite simple. Simply find the peaks and the troughs and identify whether the highs are rising or the lows are falling. But if you try to explain that to a computer, it's more difficult. People are very good at recognizing patterns just by looking at the chart, where a computer needs hard rules to understand whether that forms a peak or not and whether they're falling or not. Uh, and it's quite easy to, when you've got two peaks to know if they're rising or falling, but finding the peaks in the first place is difficult. There are quite a lot of ways to do that, some very complex calculations you can perform. But there is also one very simple way that I use quite often that simply involves matching the bar against the bars to either side to determine if you have a peak or a trough, simply based on the distance away from the next nearest peak or trough. So today I'm just going to show you that function. I'm going to put it inside a script, but you can then lift that function and put it inside an expert advisor or an indicator if you need it to find peaks or troughs. So I'll just quickly go to the chart and try to explain what I'm talking about, and then we'll get into the code, write it, and then I'll run the script, which will draw a couple of trend lines on the chart just as a demonstration of what we've been talking about. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, people are very good at seeing patterns, and I can see a very rapid drop here and an increase here, and this is obviously higher lows along here. The question comes, how do you describe this to a computer? So this is fairly obviously a peak if I look at it, and this appears to be a peak, and so does this. But depending on the rules you give to the computer, they may not be. And in fact, when I demonstrate the code, this will not be a peak, and nor will this. And that's because the function I'm going to show you relies on the high or the low being distant from bars on either side that are higher or lower. And this particular high only has two bars more to the right before there's another bar that's higher. Uh, and this one, one, two, three, four, five, this bar five to the right is actually slightly higher. And the function I'm going to be using, I'm just going to be setting that tolerance at five bars. So this will not qualify. If I tightened it up a little, then this could be a peak, because if I made the tolerance four bars, then obviously it is. But I'm just setting it at five as an example to show how it makes a difference. So it's going to be a fairly simple function. And as I said, this function relies on finding a bar that has nothing higher or lower to five bars either side, or any number that you set. And this is something you can easily use then in your code whenever you need to find peaks and determine if you've got rising peaks or falling peaks. Now I have the MetaTrader 5 editor open here. The code that I'm going to write will work for both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. So I'm actually going to write two functions. Uh, one is just a small utility function because there's a piece of code that I would be repeating several times in the main function. So I'm just going to extract that out to a sub function to make it a little neater and easier to read. And I'm going to be putting all of this inside a script but I'll write the functions first and then I'll write the code here inside the script to call those functions. And the code that I'll write will actually draw two trend lines on the chart by passing through the two most recent highs and the two most recent lows. So first that little utility function. And I'm calling this one find next peak. And the purpose of this is given a starting position, it will find the next bar for the current mode, which is either mode high or mode low. So it will either find the next high or the next low bar for a distance of count bars beginning at the start. So it'll find the, the highest in that range. Uh, and it's really very similar to the I highest and I lowest. In fact, it's going to use those, but it just wraps them up because this way by passing in mode, it will use either the highest or lowest. And I don't need to keep repeating that inside the main function.
So first, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be looking for bars that have a gap to both sides. But if you started searching from bar number zero and you looked for a gap to the right, you'll be looking into negative numbers of bars. Um, and just to make that easier, I'm doing a quick check here. So if the start bar comes in as negative, so let's say I've set that I want to look for five bars each side, and I'm beginning with bar number zero, then start bar that gets passed in here would be minus five. And that's not really a good number to start with. Um, the functions don't work properly with the negative numbers. They actually begin at zero anyway, but still for the range that you're counting. So I'm doing a quick check here. If the start bar is less than zero, then first thing I want to do is reduce the size of count by as much as that start bar is negative. So if we're starting from zero and I'm looking five bars to the right, which takes me to minus five, then start bar would be minus five. I'll add that to the count, which because start bar is a negative number, adding it to the count actually reduces count. So I'm making the number of bars I'm searching smaller. And then I just set start bar to zero. So after that little bit of code, I know that I'm always starting at least at bar number zero and that count only takes me as far as I intended to go. And then, as I said, this is to wrap up the I highest and I lowest. So I'm using the ternary operator here. So I'm testing if mode equals mode high, question mark. And if I've passed in high, then I'm going to use the I highest function, passing in the chart symbol, the chart period, I'm casting mode to enum series mode. So you'll see here I've passed it in as an integer to the function, but I'm casting it to enum series mode. This is just to avoid the compiler complaining because this is an integer and in the function it's expecting a series mode. For count and beginning with the start bar. And if mode is not high, then I'm looking for I lowest. So this simply wraps those up and saves me repeating this piece of code several times in the main function. And that's the find next peak function. So the next thing we need to look at is the main function, which I'm going to be calling find peak. So the find peak function takes the same arguments. There's a mode, a count, and a start bar. Now in the find next peak, count was the number of bars that we're searching towards the left from the start bar. In the find peak, count is the number of bars that we're searching in both directions. So I'll be doing a little bit of math inside here. So if you were actually beginning with bar number zero, then start bar here would be zero. If you were searching five bars, then by the time we call find next peak, start bar would be negative five and count would be 11. So you'll see that math here in a moment. The first thing I'm doing here, mode should be high or low. I've passed it in here as an integer, which means there's no type checking. Uh, and even if there is, there are other values in this enum that would allow you to pass other values than mode high or low. But I only want to work on highs and lows in this function. So I'm just doing that check. And if you've passed a mode that's not high or low, then I'll return a minus one, which is obviously not a valid bar number. Now I'm declaring an integer type and I'm calling current bar and initializing that to the start bar. This is going to be my counter and this will increment through the bars as I look for progressive higher or lower depending on mode high or low. And now I have another variable found bar and this is where I'm calling the find next peak function. So beginning with the current bar, I'm calling find next peak with the supplied mode and this is count multiplied by two plus one. So I want to look for count number of bars to both the right and the left of the current bar and including the current bar that's the plus one. So if I'm passing in a count of say five then I would be looking five bars to the right, five to the left and this this calculation would be 11 so I'd be calling find next peak with a count of 11. And I'm beginning at current bar minus count. So I'm beginning to the right so that I can look at all of those bars to the right. Now it might not make a lot of sense if I'm beginning with bar number zero, but you may have an indicator or an EA where you're actually beginning in the middle of the series somewhere and you want to know if the bar you're looking at is a peak or not. So I'm always beginning minus count to the right. 
and remember we had this check here that makes sure that I haven't passed in a negative number and just sets everything up if I have. So that will begin with the current bar and look for the nearest bar to the left or the right uh, that is higher or lower depending on mode high or low. Now if it finds a bar, or it should at least find one because at worst the current bar is the highest or the lowest. So then I have a while loop here. If the found bar is not the same as the current bar, it means that the current bar is not either the highest or the lowest. So I need to keep looking. And in the case where I do need to keep searching, first I need to reset the current bar to something else to begin another search. And to do that, I'm again using the find next peak, but I'm using it slightly differently here. I'm still passing the mode, but this time I'm only passing the count because I'm only going to be looking now to the left. And I'm looking to the left beginning at current bar plus one. So I know current bar was not either the highest or the lowest. So I'm just going to step one to the left and then search count bars to the left to find the highest or the lowest bar in that range. And that will be my new current bar because I know that there's no point in just stepping one at a time. I might as well take a bit of a leap if I've got progressively higher or lower bars. And once I've got a new current bar, which is my starting position, I now want to make sure that that is the highest or the lowest within the range of count both sides. And to do that, I'm just repeating exactly the same code that I had for found bar here. Now I'm setting found bar with find next peak, mode, still count multiplied by two plus one, and still current bar minus count. So that will again search in both directions to see if there is a bar that is higher or lower than the current bar. And as long as found bar keeps coming back with a different value than current bar, I'll keep going through this loop until eventually it will return the same value and that way I know that the bar that I've started with, the current bar, is the highest or the lowest in that range. And then it falls out through the loop and I just return current bar. And that's as simple as the functions need to be to find those highs and lows. Um, I'm just gonna write some code now in the onStart to call these functions and find the two most recent highs and the two most recent lows and draw a trend line through those. Now this is just an example script, so I'm not going to worry about taking any inputs. I'm just declaring a variable that's shoulder, and this is I'm just setting it to five. So I'm looking for five bars each side. Declaring two variables, bar one and bar two, so they'll be my first and second found bars of the peaks. And now I'm calling the find peak for bar number one. Find peak, I'm looking for the highs, passing in that shoulder size, and I'm beginning at bar number zero, so I'm looking for the first high. And once I have that, I'm going to set up bar number two, calling the same find peak function, mode high, the same shoulder, and I'm just beginning one bar to the left of bar one. So this will find the next high bar. Once I have that, I'm just going to draw a trend line on this chart. So all I'm doing is deleting the object in case it already exists on the chart and I'm calling the upper trend line upper. And then just an object create statement, creating an object trend line, uh, and I'm passing in these two bar numbers, the time and the value for each of those. And then I'm just setting the color and the width to make them easier to see on screen. And I'm setting it to obj prop ray right so that the line continues past the right hand. Once I've done that, that's drawn the upper trend line, so I'll just repeat all of that now for the lower trend line. Exactly the same call, but here I'm passing in mode low. Otherwise the values are the same. And again, I repeat for bar number two with mode low. And now I'm gonna draw a trend line, I'm just calling this one lower. And that's the finish. So I should be able to compile that. Let me just make sure I haven't made a mistake. That worked. So I'm just gonna to go to the chart now and then we can see this work.
So now on the chart, I'm just going to drag my peak finder from the scripts onto the chart. And it has found it has found a high here, which is five bars clear to the right and the left. And the next bar that has five to the right and left is up here. And then it's drawn the trend line through those. And on the low side, this bar has the lowest low for five to either side. And this is the next bar that is the lowest low with five to either side. We just bring a different currency on the chart and we'll see another one. So we're getting a different pattern here. But again, this is the highest high to begin with, five to either side. And then this is the next high that has five to either side. Uh, this line here is not the next high because if I go one, two, three, four, five, you can see this line is higher, therefore that doesn't qualify. On the low side, this is the first low with five to either side. Uh, this has five to the right, one, two, three, four, five, but one, two, three, four, five, this bar is actually lower within five to the left, and so that's been chosen as the next low. And so that's all you need, a very simple pair of functions that will search for a high and low. This may not be the most sophisticated method of finding the swing highs and swing lows, but it is certainly simple and works in most cases for most applications. Hope you found this useful. If you have, then click that thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe. And then if you click the bell icon, you'll actually be notified when we release another video. So until the next time, thank you for watching.